Keepers of the East Gate. Mm, 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 mm. To the keepers of the West Gate. Mm, 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 mm. Keepers of the North Gate. Mm, 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 mm. I'm coming home. Mm, 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 mm. To the keepers of the East Gate. I'm coming home to the keepers of the West Gate. I'm coming home to the keepers of the North Gate. Prepare his bed, his stead. I'm coming home to the keepers of the South Gate. Keep that shit open because we're coming through that south gate, and if you try to stop us, we shall devour you. To the keepers of the east gate! To the keepers of the west gate! To the keepers of the north gate! I'm coming home! Hey! Are you ready to get started? I told you. I was gonna do one of these long ones. Now listen up, okay. All right, with all seriousness, what I did, like, truthfully, three different three-hour haplogroup videos. These three haplogroup videos I've destroyed. I made one, then I destroyed it. I made another, then I destroyed it. And I made another, then I destroyed it. The haplogroup videos that you have seen lately are the haplogroup videos that are under three and a half hours that I've decided to not destroy. So, now we're gonna go over some things that just happen to be lying around the internet. So, when you read these little Indian things about these different Indian groups, they call themselves the keepers of this gate keepers of that gate. That shit was on my mind, so I just had to babble out some goofy shit. Get the day all started nice. Now, mm. Ding. now while your family's in church and while my family's probably in church, we're just gonna learn some shit. Okay, so DNA from 12,000 year old skeleton helps answer the question, who were the first to make it in 2007? Cave divers found, uh, they discovered remains that formed the oldest, most complete and genetically intact human skeleton in the new world. They found it just like this, on this crazy ass metal sheet that looked like some underwater cooking plate, right? Anyway, diver Susan Bird works at the bottom of Hoya Negro, a large dome-shaped underwater cave on Mexico's Yucatan. She carefully brushes the human skull found at the site while her team members take detailed photographs. Okay, so they're in a place called Negro Lake. It's called Hoya Negro. Okay, so that was a settlement during uh, Spanish and American War. That was a Negro settlement called Hoya Negro, and that was in Mexico. This came up uh, when I was studying uh, about three weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Uh, didn't decide to push the information, so, but this comes up. So, it's a uh, teenage girl took a walk in what's now the Yucatan Peninsula and fell into a 190-foot fell 190 feet into a deep pit, breaking her pelvis and likely killing her instantly. Over time, the pit, part of the elaborate limestone cave system, became a watery grave, as for the most recent ice age 
ended, glaciers melted, blah, 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 blah. See, they're, they're pushing that ice age shit. You get around that. Basically, um, they found the dead body of a teenage girl, uh, and they found the massive breaking at her pelvis. Uh, and, you know, that's, you know, where your sun shines. Um, but the sun don't shine where your sun shines, right? You all know where a pelvic bone is, right? It's where our legs split. So somehow, she fell up 190 feet and landed on her fucking pelvis of all places. So, yeah. That actually sounds like, m more like a, uh, a way to torture somebody. You know, drop them off the cliff, you know, with their fucking legs tied open. How the hell is somebody will fall on their pelvis? It's not like they said, they broke their tailbone. Pelvis and tailbone are, you know, opposite sides of the same area. So, you know, they're probably not right in this has it really, you know, you know, somebody tied vines around the girl's legs, whatever. You the vines would be gone by now. There's no flesh on the body. It's a watery grave. You wouldn't find any of that stuff. So, this guy just thinks she's walked off the edge of a fucking cliff. Oh. Some dumb Negro in, 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 in Hoya Negro just walked off the side of a cliff and oh, we found her body fucking thousands of years later, whatever. So, um, but therein lies the puzzle. Modern Native Americans closely resemble people of China, Korea, and Japan, but the oldest skeletons do not. Archaeologists and pantheologists, uh, Mr. Chatters, James Chatters, the lead author of the study and the owner of the Applied Paleoscience, a research consulting service in Bothell, Washington. A small number of early American specimens discovered so far have similar, I mean, excuse me, have smaller and shorter faces and longer, narrower skulls than later native. Americans. See, it says later Native Americans. So the people that are Native American that look like Chinese, Korean, and Japanese are later Native Americans, more closely resembling the modern African, Australia, and the South Pacific. So what's he saying? What they're saying is the little girl's body that they found, based on anthropology and excuse me, archaeo archaeology and pa uh, paleontology, <laughs> paleontology, right? They're able to, to, to say that, well, she resembles someone from Africa, Australia, or South Pacific. Now, what do those places have in common? Okay, Afro peoples. Okay, they're not talking about the thieves and murderers sent uh, to Australia from Britain. And they're definitely not talking about the white tourists uh, that are there from colonization in Pacific, uh, South Pacific Islands. Okay? They're talking about people of Fiji Island, people of uh, Solomon Island, Australia, Africa, those south lands, right? But we know like Australia's people been moved and the South Pacific people been moved. They weren't born on those islands. The people that moved them to those islands were born on those islands. This is what led speculation of perhaps the first Americans and Native Americans would be from different homelands. Chatters continues, or migrated from Asia, you're called Afro-Asian, at different stages of evolution. Now, do you see how this paragraph, well, at least these two paragraphs seem to go hand in hand at what I teach? That's the fucked up thing. Some dumb nigger from, from, from the slums of Akron, Ohio, fucking teaches real history and, and, Bodies pulled out of fucking watery graves matches what he teaches. Isn't that weird? That's why all y'all came though. It's cool. I, I mean, I understand. That's why I broadcast the shit. The first Americans are different than Asians. They come from different homelands or migrated from fucking Asia. Wait a second. So you say the black people migrated from fucking Asia and then the Asians came over and are called later Native Americans? See the real game? Hmm. That's what's up. 
the newly discovered skeleton they named Niana. Oh, there's no and Nia, Nia, whatever, whatever. By the divers who discovered her after the Greek for water should help to settle this speculation. Through her skull, though her skull is shaped like those of of other early Americans, what does that mean? That she was fucking wrapping her head. Her skull is shaped like other other early Americans. Okay, wait, 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 wait. No, no. He's saying that her skull is shaped like the African, the Australian, and the South Pacific, not like the later Native Americans whose blood resemble, right? Modern, later, modern Native Americans closely resemble China, Korea, and Japan. See the game? <coughs> this is why they won't DNA test any bodies. <coughs> it wasn't until they had the camera that they got these Japanese-looking Indians. Oh, what? Really? It wasn't until the camera that they got these fucking Chinese looking Indians. Remember that Indian group I showed you that's out of Canada and they share fucking, they, uh, you can see uh, Shin, Shin, Shinto in their name? Isn't that the Japanese fucking uh, 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 religion? Shinto? When they talk to each other, when they apologize, when they say good job and shit, don't they go sh Shin Shin? See? They're taking your fucking place. Just like, remember they did it. Hey, I got to do this video. I'll be damned. Somebody sent me one of those videos. He's just sitting there in front of, what, Anchor Water or some shit? Sitting there reading to you. No, I, I'm, I'm, no, I can't do it. If I do it, we'll be, we'll be behind. Fuck it. We're always behind, right? Azeroth is America. Continue from Hastings Hasten is coming. Hasten is coming. So 11 minutes. There you go. Check out that title. I don't have to play it. I can if I want to, but I don't have to play it right now. Azarath is America. No went to a land no man knew. Right? So they come first and then all these other men come. Alright, so you can see where this is going. They, 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 okay, they're telling you that who caused the Bering Strait. Now, in a video, in a video interview, you'll hear Horace Butler state, "Moses crossed the Red Sea," but I don't hear him. I don't hear him in his book saying that. Here's the Red Sea. From what they be talking about, the Red Sea, they talking about the Red Salmon out of the Bering Sea. Red Snapper. I don't know nothing about no blood water red or no, no shit like that. Now, they go tell you Hoya Negro is Spanish for black hole. But I'm telling you, I, I've already seen that the Negroes had a settle, settlement in Mexico. To, to bring it up right now is going to get me behind. Now, when I do this, when I scroll all through this, the one thing I'm looking for is the DNA numbers, letters. Excuse me, letters and number one, you know. R1, Q, whatever, B12, you sank my battleship. Researchers focused on mitochondria DNA, but they won't tell you what the fucking mitochondria DNA is which is used by geneticists to examine how populations are related. Now, did you know that? Did you know that one of the, their goals is to see how populations are related? How many other goals do they have? This is technically an obvious goal, right? Always talk about if you got your DNA test and somebody else got their DNA test, if you're from the same category, you can say, oh, we're related, to examine how populations are related. All right, but what else do they do with it? mtDNA is more abundant than DNA found in a cell's nucleus. So it's easier to study. 
See? Hey, it's easier to study. Uh, it's easier to leave the fucking trash sit there for a few days, but it fucking smells bad after a while, right? It's easy for us to chase MTDNA, but it's not going to get us anywhere. The word king that's passed down from father to son deals with male lineage. I can't help that that's harder. I can't help that we as a society always want to take the easy fucking route because we're spoiled. MTDNA is more abundant than DNA found in a cell's nucleus, so it's easy to study. Well, reading all of this isn't easy. So I, I don't see why we don't take the bigger step. Now, dumb street nigger Alex has to take the step and read this shit. So why isn't her MTDNA on this article? Why doesn't it say which number uh, uh, and letter she is? Well, they already told you up here. Let me go up here, Ken. I'm going to go right back up here. right back up here where does it say that oh okay it says the smaller number of early American specimens discovered so far have smaller and shorter faces and longer and narrower skulls than the later Native Americans more closely resembling the modern people of Africa, the modern people of Australia, and the modern people of South Pacific. This has led to the speculation that perhaps the first Americans and Native Americans came from different homelands. Isn't that a fucking retarded sentence? The first Americans and Native Americans came from somewhere different. How can you be native to a place if you come from somewhere different? or migrated from Asia at different stages of their evolution, right? So they already said she looked like an African. She looked like the modern African. So does that mean the modern African was not there in history? See, a lot of shit's being toggled around in these sentences. Watch this. The newly discovered uh, skeleton Though her skull is shaped like those of earlier Americans, she shares DNA sequence with some modern, some modern Native Americans. Oh, did you understand that? That means these Chinese, Korean, and Japanese Americans, modern Native Americans, fucked into what these people what these people classify as early American specimens which resemble modern African, modern Australian, and modern South Pacific people, i.e. African Americans. Now, African Americans resemble some people in Africa. They resemble the Ab original, A plus B original people. Okay, that means the original people is there, A. That means a second group came, B, but they're still considered aboriginal, uh, uh, native to that place because they were moved there. And their history was taken from them. <coughs> so, look, if you've been watching the videos long enough, you understand what I'm saying? Even to some degree, you've having flashbacks of the videos I done showed you some of the evidence of this shit. So, real quick, you scroll down. You don't see no fucking capital letters and numbers together. You, you don't see her DNA, uh, whatever they, her haplogroup. It's not written anywhere on screen in the whole article. So, first, this article proves in, in science's own words. Now, we already have seen videos that show 
they sent skulls to uh, to Europe, to Manchester. You know, that's that's number one. The man, the, uh, the anthropologists from Manchester already said sixteen thousand year old skulls from from America are Negro. He said, I, I wanted it to be Mongol. I wanted it to be Mongol. I wanted it to be Mongol. So everybody's already saw that video. So we gonna move on. Now, here's some shit. Call the U cheese. Utechis, Utechis home, history of South Carolina. So these are some uh, some Indians that that uh, that are talked about. Here we go. States fact: Virginia passed two acts in 1682. Now. You can look up Virginia Act of 1682 and you should get two. Two acts in 1682 that combine Native Americans. That means people that are what? Native to the soil. That combine Native Americans and Africans into one category as Negroes and other slaves. You understand what's going on in one fucking sentence. One sentence says it all. They don't even have a title to this fucking page, do they? No title. No title to this page. Look, just pause the screen. S R B E U C H E E tribalnation.org. A colonial authority on race history. Virginia passed two acts in 1682 that combine Native Americans and Africans into one category. Niggas. As Negroes and other slaves. The word black may include all Negroes, but the term Negro. Look at that. The word black includes all Negroes, but the term Negro does not include all black persons. Isn't that fucking weird? I even think that sentence is wrong. The word black includes black people and Negroes, but the term Negro does not include black people. That's better. We are of the opinion that the word white, Negro, mulatto, and black persons, wherever they occur in our Constitution, must be taken in their generic, generic sense before laws were written to change what they meant that the words black person in the 14th section must be taken as contradistinguished from, from white and necessarily includes all the races than Caucasians. People v. Hall, 1854, as cited in Forbes in 1993. The science of racial myth as... <laughs> Initiated by the 18th century, Carl von Linn, Carlos Linnaeus, and Johann Frederick Blum, Blumbach, color-coded Europe as white, Asia as yellow, Africa as black, and America as red, without the slightest regard to facts. Neither Linn nor Bach had ever seen any of the people they presume to describe or classify. Now, isn't that funny? Some motherfucking Freemasons sat around a round table and said, we got these reports. Let's classify this section of the world as this and so forth. And now today, here we are mimicking them. Right? The American Indian who became reclassified as free person of colored or colored person or mulatto was placed under the umbrella of Negro. So if you're an American Indian that looked Negro, you were placed on a, under an umbrella even though your blood is not Negro. That's what this is saying. If you're a black Indian You were thrown under the subject of Negro. 
If you're a black Indian, you're called black because somebody stamped black on a map. This is the game, people. Now, separate all this. What is the DNA of the American Negro? What is the haplogroup of African Americans? Well, you can do haplogroup. Negroy. That's what you name your kid. Negroy, come here, boy. Whoop these motherfuckers' asses. Yes, sir. Can I use the axe? Yes, yes, yes. Negroy. Negro, use the axe. Let's see. Haplo. Just hit the one in charge. Just hit the one in charge. Yeah, this is gonna stop. Now, if you type in Haplo group of Negro, American Negro, first thing that comes up is indigenous people. Okay. So you gotta understand, the Negro is indigenous. The black Indian is separate from the Negro, which is the native. You get what's going on? The Negro is indigenous, the black Indian's native, and the blacks from Europe that they overthrew is what they call in the slaves that they brought over. What a game. Now, look at this. I said haplogroups of American Negro. And here we go. X. See? <laughs> I'm so fucking happy. It's so easy. See, if you want to play around with mtDNA, I'll play around with mtDNA because it's fucking easy, right? YSTR, descriptions of paternal, papa, paternal lineage. Ah, right, for North and South American Native people, right? Wait, oh, oh but Q, that this, not what these guys researching the map say, but what the map says. But Q is all over fucking America, right? R, R1B and fucking Q when I pull up that haplogroup map. And this motherfucker say, all over North and South America, the natives is Y. Well, what is Y, S-T-R? Hmm? Y, S-T-R haplogroups, below our brief descriptions, are the major Y DNA haplogroups, right? A, A is the most basal and diverse of Y chromosome lineage, and it's exclusively found in Africa with high representation among hunter-gatherer societies in Europe, uh, excuse me, Ethiopia and Sudan. So, B. B is lineage distrib distributed sporadically across the African continent. Uh, it's popular among pygmies. And just over 2% of African Americans belong to B. C originated shortly after the first migration of modern humans out of Africa. Today, the group is most common in Eurasia, East and South Asia, and can be found among the Western North American indigenous peoples. So, the people of California, all no Western North American groups. So that would be Nevada, huh? That would be, what, Utah? So you should see haplogroup C there, right? No, but they just told you. They only told you about Q. They only told you. Now, this is not female DNA. It's male, right? Male DNA. See, we covered L. We'll cover L again today. But we covered L and they said, oh, they snuck that in. It's female, right? Everybody's based off this female. L3 pops out women. I mean, pops out <laughs> What? Right. So, 
D arose in Asia. Its members migrated along the southern coast of Asia, ultimately settling in Central and East Asia, but not in the Americas. This haplogroup is distinctive in its geographic differentiation. Haplogroup E is a, one of the oldest branches of the human family tree. It arose 55,000 years ago, either in East Africa or Asia. During this time, the very first human migrations out of Africa have just occurred. These are the goddamn Canaanites leaving Africa. That the only migration is the Canaanites leaving and the Hyksos coming in. That's what we got recorded. This haplogroup is very common in Africa today, although a particular sub-branch can be found in Europe. That's another Europe, Africa, Asia haplogroup. Haplogroup F is an ancient. Now, why didn't it say that these are all ancient? A is the most basal, right? But if F is the most ancient and A is the first in our alphabet, See, A, the word ancient starts with A, so why didn't they categorize the things that are under F under A? If it's the most ancient. F is the most ancient and widespread haplogroup that today comprises more than 90% of all non-African men. <coughs> right. Haplogroup F is one of the first haplogroups of modern humans to develop outside of Africa. Well, what do I go back up where it says, uh, everybody, where, where you tell us everybody migrated out of Africa? First migration of, of modern humans out of Africa. All right, so, okay little two ways on a one way street there G is relatively young but widely distributed common in old world European populations the Middle East and North Africa <coughs> Central South and West Asia one subgroup of G is a distinctive genetic marker of the Ashkenazi Jews ah, ha, 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 ha relatively young that means it's relatively new but being so new it spread really fast like a virus turns out it's G2 G2C is distinctive for Ashkenazis so that's kind of funny H is one of the main genetic hallmarks of India its members are believed to be responsible for the first major settlements around 30,000 years ago. H is also prevalent among Romani people or gypsies. Roman. Just drop the I. Fucking Romans. Subgroup of Romans. Haplogroup I is found in 20% of European men today. It comprises several groups that are associated with specific geographic regions in Europe. So... That's kind of, the, that's the smallest one, right? O, o is written that small as well. All these other ones have three lines, some have four, and just two lines for this I. It's 20, found 20% 20 in Euro European men. Several subgroups are associated with specific geographic regions in Europe. So, a long time ago, when Europe wasn't so populated, this is one of the first groups that went out and fucked everybody. And then more people were created, and then that, for the most part, that, that male seed died off. But he's recorded in that blood. Haplogroup J is very common in the Middle East. And in the Mediterranean, haplogroup Jesus, North Africa and South Europe, all the places where Rome ruled. The, yin the lineage, the lineage, the lineage is divided into subgroups J1 and J2. Joe Coyne. The later is being associated with the Neolithic archaeological sites. Now, you see, they think I'm fucking stupid, right? 
and when you go to this, uh, how far down here, here's, here's where we are, Americans, blah, 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 right? You know, full description, and we're going to go to, uh, to where they're, caught, they're naming the land, 15, 17, I think that's too far. Yeah. This is it. Neotholia, the New World containing Attila or North America. See, Neotholia. And what is the other one? Alright, so that's Neotholia, right? So when we read these cats again. Oops, one more. Neolithic. Neolithic archaeological. So they're two different things. Neo meaning new, right? Or or one, right? Upper Loop K spread from its homeland in southwestern Asia through Eurasia to the lineage ranges from Australia, Oceania to South Asia and thence to Southern Asia, North Africa. L is the most prev prevalent am among certain populations of India and Pakistan. Now, isn't that funny? India and Pakistan, the lineage can also be found in low frequencies in Europe, North Africa, Middle East, and Central Asia. Now, that's haplogroup L. That's not MT DNA. This is male lineage. Let me see if I got that. Oh, I'm sure I got it somewhere up there. Alright, M descended from. Eurasian haplogroup K. Haplogroup M is the characteristics of Southeast Asian populations. Some have been associated with the development of rice in that region. N rose in Southeast Asia, possibly Eastern Eurasia. Sporadically distributed in China through Northern Europe, reaching um, its point in, uh, highest concentration in Siberia. O is a specific uh, to East Asia, subgroups O1 and O3, typical of Chinese populations. O2 is sporadically from South to East Asia. So, you can see how it's sporadically from South to East Asia. So, from South Asia they came in, they moved eastward in Asia till they ended up in China and bed down with O1 and O3. This is why you find traces of O2 all the way. It shows the trail, right? When we go to uh, Chinese literature or Roman literature about Chinese and Japanese, it calls them Shin. Shin is a Canaanite name. It is Shinna, Shin, people of sin. So. When we say Ham's children came out of Africa, this DNA, this page proves it with DNA. Specifically to East Asia. What is East Asia? Chinese. O1 and O3. While O2, still the same, different branch, but still from O, O2 is distributed. From South Asia, what does South Asia connect to? Mesopotamia, right? From out South Asia to East Asia. P and its major descendant groups, Q and R. So Q and R descend from P, represent in many Western Europeans, indigenous Americans, Central Asians. Today, the descendants of those related lineages can be found throughout U Eurasia and Americas. All right, so... Q. It's common among Siberian population, uh, native populations. Now, in Siberia, we know that they have Indians that are separate blood than North American Indians or Northeast American Indians. But since their blood is Q in Siberia, we do know it matches Americans. But what it's not saying is 
uh, South, I mean, uh, Central America to West. When we look at the haplogroup map, it's divided right in the middle. Uh, approximately 15,000 years ago, the lineage spread to the New World. So from Siberia, right? Time of Joshua chasing these motherfuckers out. They get to Siberia, and they still think he's going to keep coming, so they go back to the New World from a different direction and don't even realize they're in the same fucking place. Becoming most widespread paternal hollow group in, among both North and South American native populations. So you see it's on the central area of North America. Extent, when we look at the haplogroup uh, map, it extends west to the border of California and then proceeds south to all of South America. Alright, so R, and it's easy to remember that because they only have a couple of haplogroups in America as they claim. They, they say just C, R, B, 1, and Q. That's what they tell you. But when you start looking up individual things about black people DNA, they tell you it's all over America and it's all these different fucking numbers and letters. Now you have to ask yourself, if you all if you're all one group, if you're all different branches of one group, how do you have all these different things? And I'll highlight them in a second. Recent European immigrations has carried the haplogroup to the Americas as well. This is with R. R is a major European group, subgroup R1, A, split off 15,000 years ago to Persia during the peak of the ice age, found high frequency and diversity in northern India and eastern Europe. R1B can be found throughout Europe. Recent European immigrations has carried the haplogroup to the Americas as well as Australia. Where you sent your fucking criminals. Apple Group S is characteristic of Highlands, Papua New Guinea, and researchers believe may have originated there. Now you already know the fucking people. The black people of Papua New Guinea ain't from Papua New Guinea. They didn't been moved there, so it didn't fucking originate there. Geneticists have only recently distinguished Apple Group S from its parent clad haplogroup K. So let's go back up to haplogroup K because they just gave a big secret away. So when you go back to K, guess who forgot how to fucking spell? Elemental P H I J K. Why is K out of place? K should be right there, right? G H I J K is not there. Haplogroup K. Oh, here it is, right here. It starts right, right here, halfway in the middle of the other one. See? Let's pretend this is an accident for a second. All right. All the haplogroups have their fucking marker placed. They're all in red. Their title. They start, you know, what abridged or whatever it's called. They start at their own paragraph, but K starts there. Now, just keep in mind. Just keep in mind that we are Afro-Asian and that we are marginalized. So if we're reading this and it says, oh, blah, 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 Haplu Group K, blah, 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 S is Papua New Guinea, you know, those are niggas. And it says they only recently distinguished them from Haplu Group K, their parent Haplu Group. Oh, so it says K spread from its homeland in southwestern Asia. So, listen to this again. S is the characteristics of the highlands of Papua New Guinea and researchers believe it originated there. Okay, so S originated in Papua New Guinea, says the researchers. But geneticists, right? Researchers and geneticists are two different fucking things. That's why it doesn't say geneticists right here. That's why it says researchers. Geneticists have only recently distinguished haplogroup S, which we're reading, from its parent clad K. So K is the parent. So when we go up to K, K says what? Uh, these dudes are homeland is from Eurasia to Southwest Asia. 
now we have a big secret. Today the lineage reigns from Australia to Oceania. So they've been moved to Australia. They've been moved out of Asia, out of Southwestern Asia, and out of Eurasia, and they've been moved to South Asia, Oceania. Oceania is not, listen to this, Australia and South Asia are, are kind of the same hemisphere. Oceania, is it? Right? I mean, Oceania is by Australia, but if you originate in the islands, like they say, but your fucking parent group originates from the soil, right? So, do we catch them in a lie? K spreads from its homeland in southwestern Asia. Nigga, where are you from? Well, I don't know, but they call me Afro-Asian. Nigga, where are you from? I don't know, but they call me Afro-Asian. Nigga, where are you from? I'm going to take a guess. Southwestern Asia? Eurasia? Europeans come, they fucking say, we're not, we're not the original people to Asia. We got them in what we call ghettos. We call them niggas. Let's read the last one. Haplogroup T is a rare haplogroup. It is common, found in East Africa and Western Asia. It is also found in Central and Western Mediterranean regions. Now, we ain't learned much, but we still learn something big. <coughs> we see <coughs> DNA evidence and points to what is the Afro-Asian homeland. What are the haplogroups of African Americans? Alright. So, 10 surprising ancestral origins revealed by DNA testing. African DNA found in Yorkshiremen. <coughs> A1 is very rare. Now we go right back here. A1 is most basal and diverse of all Y chromosomes, the group is found exclusively in Africa, Ethiopia, and Sudan. So, when they find it, A1 is very rare and highly specific to West Africa. John Rivas shared this genetic match with seven others, uh, other northern Englishmen, with the surname Rivas. So, showing you white people came out of West Africa. You'll be surprised when you start fucking around with these, DNA, with these DNA morons. They give away bigger secrets. And then they solidify their secrets. So when you see R1A or R1B, blah, 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 matches Africa, matches Chad. Then you have evidence that even A1, which is specific to West Africa, came out. They're white people now. And they share the same surname. They share the same blood. They share the same surname. Now, Roman legacy in DNA of Welshmen. A more likely Roman genetic le legacy in Britain Isles lies in a town of Abergale on the north coast of Wales where a curiously high percentage, as much as one third of the males, bear haplogroup E one B one B one A one B or E V thirteen E V thirteen originated in North Eastern Africa around eighteen thousand years ago. Canaanites and entered your Canaanites at some time via the Balkan Can Okay, you got it right, Canaanites. All right. If it originates in Africa, just like this one, and then bears its children in Europe, just like this one, Canaan. You can see what's going on, right? Roman genetic legacy in Aberdeen. You see, they got a nigga up front, right? No, <laughs> right. I start looking for fucking black people. They start showing weird pictures. You see white soldiers in the background. 
Rome wasn't one class. It was you. You could be Roman if you could pay your way in. Why the men of Aberdeen carry the rare marker is not yet known, but its high frequency could be due to the settlement of the town during the first to the fourth centuries by Roman soldiers coming in and everybody. Chinese villagers descend from Roman soldiers. Hey, how could Welsh people and Chinese villagers descend from Roman soldiers? Now, do I need to read this or do I just show you the image? This is Kai, the Roman Julius Caesar. He has the same nose, he has the same lips, he has the same eyebrows, even the same eyes. And even the same DNA. It doesn't matter what I fucking say. The DNA matches. Perhaps the surprising outcome of this DNA test actually appears to have debunked the whole myth. The DNA of the sample 277 males from Lequin shows that 77% of their chromosome are strictly East Asian. They are closely related to the Chinese majority and far removed from Central Asia and Western Eurasians where they receive their European features from is a mystery. It may have something to do with Indo-European speaking nomadic tribesmen in the region before 1000 AD, but it's highly unlikely to the Romans. Oh, so they're not Romans. That means the Romans came out of them. How would the Romans know the fucking Chinese are Sinites? Through conquering? Maybe. Through their own history? More than likely. Viking, Viking, American Indian DNA in Icelanders. All right, well, you can see what that says. Oh shit, the word scraling comes up. Okay, so. Nah, 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 nah. So I was reading about scralings and I was like, dude, this is fucking kind of creepy. It's like these three foot, four foot something little Indian dudes running around and shit. And then I was uh, like, no sooner than I read this shit, I went to the store for a pack of motherfucking cigarettes. I go to the store and these motherfucking scralings are literally in the store. I've never seen them before in my life until I read the definition of what they were. When I read the definition of, this, uh, of what they were, I go to the store, there's these little three foot and four foot dudes, all looking like American Indians, running around the store. They're drunk as fuck. They've never been in a store like this before. The woman, she has. She's carrying the money. They all want beer. She's trying to get them to pick their beer and they don't fucking know the difference. So she gets them all a beer and has them stand up there and then she asked the store clerk, can they do it? And I was like, can they do what? And then she goes, yeah. And she takes one can, she goes like, go like, she says something to this. She says something to them, but it pretty much was go like this. And then she takes the can and runs it in front of the scanner. And then the lights of the scanner go down on the can. And it goes beep. And they go <laughs> Right? So, dude, this is, at this time, this is before I'm married. I'm telling my wife this shit. I mean, I'm telling my wife about this before we're married. And she's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. And I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, she didn't really say that, but I mean, she, you know, it's the attitude she carried about it. So, we are here in the States. We're going to these pre, uh, the, the doctor, prenatal, I mean, uh, doctor visit. She has to do the prenatal doctor visit. You're not going to believe this shit. The fucking Scraling and his wife walk down the fucking, uh, down the hallway. Right in front of us. She goes, look how short they are. I go, that's a fucking scraling. They're real. <laughs> We've got this influx of Asians here in, in Ohio and every kind of Asian. The Fu Manchu, you ever watch Johnny Quest? They have a Fu Manchu little fucking whiskers coming out here. Uh, two years ago, I was walking to the store. We were walking to the store and they had this woman looked Eskimo-ish but her skin was a little bit darker and she had fucking whiskers coming out of here and they went down to here uh, through about right here they didn't go to, this is where my chin is right here so they went about right here and I was like wow that is fucking creepy who, who, who slept with her she was at the school picking up her kid 
I was like, who the fuck slept with her, dude? <sighs> That's some weird shit, dude. But she was she was of normal size. She was she's not a scraling, but she's you know just a, 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 all kinds of Asians that you can think of. These motherfuckers is here now, all right? So these scralings are little short Viking bastards, all right? And 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 they're 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 hilarious. They're like they're like somebody hit a grown man with a shrink ray. <laughs> what did you do to me? <laughs> like they, I don't think they speak English for the most part. I mean, some of the women do. But the men, they have, they still have tribal like mannerisms and instincts and shit. They don't, they don't think individually and shit. If you got something and they ain't got it, then, then that's 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 it's about the far but most of it, you know. Him got arrow, me no, me not me not happy, me want arrow too. Okay, so there's no historic evidence that Icelandic Vikings took a Native American woman back home with them. But there are accounts that are and archaeological archaeological evidence that Icelandic Vikings settled in Greenland around 1000 A.D. and went on to establish a short-lived settlement in Newfoundland. Icelandic sagas tell of their encounters with scralings. Now I have fucking encounters with scralings. Now they're not like warrior encounters, but like I didn't cross paths with them. I see that they fucking exist. <laughs> that shit is crazy. Cray cray, yeah. Everybody watch T Titans. Don't act like you don't. The Norse term for American Indians, but they seem to have been mostly hostile. That's not no. Scralings are a specific breed. You look up scralings, it'll tell you they 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 they're midgets. Dwarfs. I think midgets are 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 they're they're proportioned right. Dwarfs is is a is a ism so it's it's class you know like you know one leg bigger than the other type shit you know i believe that's how it is you know don't quote me but uh <clears throat> nonetheless dna evidence shows that a sample of icelanders uh carry a native american variation from four specific lineage descended from four women born early in the 18th century these four lineage are likely descended from a single woman with a Native American DNA and at least one of the lineage variations has mutated in a way that would likely have taken centuries to occur. What? They grew tall? No bullshit. Like, like, no living Native American has the exact genetic variations found in the Icelanders. But many versions related to the Icelandic variant, 95% found in Native Americans, suggest that variation may have come from a Native American group that died out after the arrival of Columbus and later Europeans. Oh, you killed those niggas. Would it be a trip? See this shit on Chappelle. <sighs> <coughs> Native American DNA found in English woman. I don't care. Crusaders left genetic legacy in Lebanon. Uh, yeah, okay. Florida account that uh, is likely descendant of Genghis Khan. Okay, now that fits into history that we actually study. So, 2006, asshole news, excuse me, I'm sorry, Fox News told how Florida accountant Tom Robinson knew that his great-great-great-grandfather had come to the United States from England, but his family history research drawed a blank beyond that. When he turned to genetic genealogy to uncover more about his origins, he discovered that he had probably been a direct descendant of Genghis Khan, a great Mongol ruler who conquested vast tracts of Asia and Europe in the 13th century. Y chromosomes suggest that many as 16 to 17 million men, mainly in Central Asia, share a common ancestor bearing with haplogroup C. Now, do you see that? Here in the States, you have C. They've already, we've, we've seen that when we looked at Apple Group C a second ago. Likely candidate is Genghis Khan himself, who ter whose territorial conquest famously extended the local female population. Whoa! 
Likely candidate is Genghis Khan himself, whose territorial conquest extended to the local female populations. Whoa. Yeah, no tissue samples from Genghis Khan have yet been found. So, they, this is just a fucking presumption. Get the fuck out of here! So, any descendant from him is based on probabilities. You fucking moron. However, his harm probably included hundreds, if not thousands, of women. His record, recorded sons would have kept his uh, similar sized harms in their own separate kingdoms. Okay, so. Uh, Hitler's Jewish ancestry. Alright. Uh, the DNA samples apparently belong to E1B1B. Uh, E1B1 is commonly found in North Africa. Uh, and all accounts for over 10% of all Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jew male lineage. It appears to be one of the lineages found in Jewish populations. One of the uh, lineages found in Jewish populations. Was that E1B1? African, right? More Africans come out of Africa pretending to be somebody fucking else. The rest of this is stupid. Uh, all right, so, all right. We got what we got from that. All right, go back to macro L. Uh, the mtDNA polygenetic tree represents most of the mitochondrial lineage of all living humans today. Uh, so she is connected. L is connected to mitochondrial Eve. Its major subclass include L0, L1, L2, right? L3, L4, L5, and what? The dead, L7. All right, when we pretend that we I'm just joking. All, with all non-Africans exclusively descending from L3. Okay, so, okay, non-Africans seem to be a fucking minority all of a sudden. All right, if your DNA says everybody's off out of Africa, but then you're fucking saying there's non-Africans, then that brings some kind of confusion that people will not respect. That's the problem. Now, L3 is so diverse. African African L3 is so diverse. It 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 it, it spawns non-Africans. Right? It spawns M and M, M and N descendant from Eurasian group K, right? You see that? Haplogroup M is descended from Eurasian group K. Well, how can that be? M is characteristic of Southeast Asian populations. K is up here, hidden, right? Marginalized. K spread from, its, from South West Asia throughout Eurasia. M, South East Asia. Asia. So they went from the west to the east. N says it's sporadic from China to northeast Europe. This says M or N sub branches of L3. Now, when I go to group M, what does it say? Does it say the same thing as the other one did? Like its sibling, it comes from L3. When we look at it, here we have it. Northern India, East Asia, Southeast Asia. Here's N over here in West Asia. Excuse me, Middle East. So, all mtDNA haplogroups concerning native outside of Africa are descendants of either M or the sibling group N. Outside of Africa, the geological, geographical, excuse me, geographical distribution of M and M are associated with the distributions, excuse me, the discussions concerning out of Africa migrations and the subsequent colonization of the rest of the world. So, 
Do you see what's going on? M and N have a parent group that is African, yet they are colonizing the rest of the world. Ask yourself why that's fucking thrown in this sentence. This is the second paragraph. And it said, these groups spread from the south and went into the north. Let's go back to L. Origin. Studies of human mitochondria DNA genomes demonstrate that the root of polygenetic trees tree occurs in sub-Sahara Africa. The data suggests that Tarzanians have the high genetic diversity and possess ancient mtDNA haplogroups, some of which are Tarzanians, some of which are either rare or absent in other regions of Africa. A large diverse population that has persisted in East Africa in that region may have been an ancient source of distribution of modern humans both within and without of Africa. E mitochondrial even ancestors of this, of this macro haplogroup and she is estimated to have lived approximately 200,000 years ago <laughs> minus 10,000 years. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. Tarzania, what do these people look like? Oh, 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 look, there's a fucking axe. Just use it on the person in control. You ain't gotta kill everybody. You just gotta chop down white supremacy tree. I'm just joking is a large country in East Africa within the African Great Lakes region. Parts of the country border Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Nanda, Nga, Indi, Bubaki, It's bordered by Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Bunene. Okay, that could be good. It's bordered by Kinda, Uganda, Rwanda, Republic of Congo, to the to, and to the west is Mbaya, Malawi, Mozambique. Moza, 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 I can do. I can do this. It's Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest mountain in the Tanzania. Wait, I can do this. I can. Do this. This, this can be recordable worthy. All right. It's spotted by Kenya, Uganda, to the North Rwanda. <laughs> it's spotted by Kenya, Uganda, to the North Rwanda. Bonerai, Bur Bur Burundi, and the Democratic Republic of the Kwan of the Congo. Oh man, I'm sorry. I stopped reading and started horsing around. I just, but come on, it's spotted by Kenya, Uganda. Wait. It's bordered by Kanda, Uganda, to the North Rwanda, Burundi, Burundi, and the Con Burundi, the Democratic Republic of of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. <laughs> I can't stop. Oh. Zanzibar! Don't they got a fucking Zam Zam in the Bible? I'll be damned. Ain't, ain't nobody in the world gonna fucking name a fucking place close to Zam Zam or Zim Zim. Op Chip It's a fucking island group. So let me tell you what my name is, what my game is, how to play, what to say when the trade comes your way. 
And you T okay, let's get rid of the Tarzania. Let's get to the let's get to the next. Apple Group M, we're getting rid of that. Alright, genetic history of indigenous people of the Americas. Anybody here over here of AT DNA? Oh it's different from MT DNA and Y DNA and an overlap. Uh, significant the genetic patterns indicate indigenous Americans experienced two very distinctive genetic episodes. Oh, so when the Bible says that you fucked into them, the word of God here I am. That's 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 not as sweet as the other one, but. You see what's going on. Listen to this. They already have all the indigenous graves mapped for the most part. I mean, they find new graves all the time. But for the most part, they already know there was two distinct group fuckings. You understand what that means. It doesn't mean group sex. That means war happened. And one people's wiped out the men of one groups, or close to. And then they started taking the trophy. What is the trophy? The trophy is always the booty. The genetic pattern indicates indigenous Americans experience two very distinctive genetic episodes. So the indigenous Americans, Amerindians, no, I don't care what anybody thinks. This one dark ass picture. Now you can show those people as light as you want. And we already know most of the people that drew these pictures ain't never seen the fucking people in their life. So, when you look at these people's faces and you see your face in them, yet today you got afros is because you fucked into them. Now, they all didn't look like this. They all didn't carry the distinct Mongol look. Remember, this is first the land of Shem. The Canaanites would have came over and fucked into the Shemites. God would have gotten mad and he would have sent the Israelites to go to the land where Abraham came from and he would have had them do what? Destroy the people. That broke the land contract. If you go and you read the book of uh what's the book called? Jubilee. Ham and his sons tried to tell Cain, do not do this thing. It will be grave. Cain was like, hey, I'm going, man. I'm not happy with the land given to me. Alright, so, now we already know the Paleo Indians have to do with the uh, Asazi, and we already know the Asazi are black Indians. Now it don't matter if they're black with stringy hair, they are black Indians. Now here's where you have the confusion, because Paleo Indians is being stamped on Indian in any Indian group. Now if you look here, the image they try to draw for you. Now, you know, there wasn't no fucking white people over here. The white man even knows that. So, when they drew these gigantic dinosaurs and these quote unquote hunter gatherer men, right, they still drew them as Caucasians. And you know they wouldn't have been that image. Alright, Paleo comes from Old Greek meaning old or ancient. Alright, so indigenous and Paleo have two different meanings but roughly are in the same category. Alright, we're going to skip over because we're not going to get too much of it from this. The indigenous people of America's and you go to the West Indies, you already know all the West, people of the West Indies is black. So, even though the term Indian does not include the Aluts, the Inuit, or the Yupikits people, these groups are considered indigenous in the 
peoples of America. So these are indigenous groups of America, but they're not considered Indians. Right? Although some indigenous groups of the Americas were tra the traditional hunter-gatherers, especially the Amazoa. Now, the Amazon River, Amazon Forest, Amazoa. It's disambiguous, right? Why? Because <laughs> Amazon is a new term. It used to be called Black River. So if I type Black River Amazon, it tells me it doesn't exist. So if I say, okay, the world's bigger than Wikipedia, so I'm just gonna copy, hit Yahoo, paste it, search it. Rio Negro, Amazon. Okay, so I guess it's not necessarily Black River, it's, it's Negro River, <laughs> alright, not, not Indian River, Negro River, and again, when you go into the America Bean, blah 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 blah, this is where the Negroes were plucked from for the most part, surrounding that river, tribally. You ate and drank from that fucking river. See, you go down, remember, we got the chief domes, and we that's how we, the, the Gual people led to the Gule, to the Gullah Wars, large stale cities, chiefdom, states, empires. Now, starting to understand what's going on, now we starting to recognize shit we done seen before. Oh, or we see that before. Dumb diverses. I want you to go and take every fucking thing they have, as well as their kingdoms, their duchies, their counts, their uh, counties, their principalities, and other property. Reduce their persons to perpetual servitude. I hope this is now starting to make sense. I know this is a long, drawn out, boring motherfucking video. I can't help that. Truth is the truth. Black River Amazon, uh, so that is, uh, yeah, right. Rio, ne Rio Negro, all right, so, Paleo Indians, ancient or old, Pale Paleolithic, right? Go back to that Neolithic, right? Paleolithic, Paleolithic and Neolithic, right? Here, upper group L2, all right, L3 is all people, that are non-African today, but it comes from what? They say African blood. Okay, if it's from African blood, then who's the father that, that spawned L2? Then who's the father that spawned L3? L2 is a human mitochondrial DNA, apple group, with the uh, widespread of modern distribution, right? Because we're products, goddammit. Distribution. And a sub-equilateral, uh, sub-equilateral, Africa, excuse me, sorry, I've been drinking water of all things. It's L2 subclad is somewhat frequent, frequent and widely distributed cluster on the continent, continent as well as African Americans. Whoa! So the DNA is all over Africa. Equilaterally, excuse me, sub equilaterally, like, you know, <laughs> sub Saharan. Are you fucking, dude, come on, sub-equilateral, come on, sub-equilateral, so, I don't even have to do this, I don't have to do this, sub-equilateral Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, African Americans, you see what's going on? So, L2 common in African lineage. Did it just not say it ain't that? It's just in sub-equilateral Africa 
but it's in African lineage, common. L2 haplogroups observed in the Ghanaians and other West African populations uh, share genetic matches with East and North African, just, just at the top, right? The sub-Saharan part where the desert is, right? The desert of fucking Africa, people. From the desert of Africa to the desert of the United States. What's in the desert of the United States? Utah, Utah, right? New Mexico. Arizona. Colorado. Four corners. Same thing. Desert. Sand niggas. We... My skin doesn't look yellow, my skin doesn't look like butter, it doesn't look like bread toasted on blah 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 bun, blah 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 blah. It looks like sand. If I lied in the sand, you'd only see me because of my hair. I am the term sand nigga. Not Arabs. Not when people randomly insult Arabs that have straight stringy hair. Uh, distribution of L2, the Americas, the Pygmies, uh, West Africans, Singali. Also important, non-Bantu populations of Sudan, um, Mozambique. It's particularly abundant in Chad. L2 is abundant in Chad. Okay, so here's something we all have in common. R1, white people come from the same woman, L3. People in Chad share the blood of the woman L2, and they share the male blood of R1B. So what do we all have in common right here? Babylon. Let's look at this five subclads. A, B, C, D, E, and E. <coughs> five main groups the most common is L2 both in Africa and the Levant scroll back up since they're being fucking stupid and in African Americans you are marginalized they'll tell you Africa in a heartbeat they don't want to bring you up L2 is widespread in Africa not now it's just not sub-saharan Africa same fucking article now it's widespread in Africa it's frequent, somewhat frequent, in Americans among descendants of Africans. L2 is possible dated origin of 48,000 years ago. It's particularly abundant in Chad people, 38%. African Americans, you carry it about 20% or 19%. It's, it's abundant in people of Chad and non-Bantu peoples like the Kenya, the Ugandans, and the Tasmanians about 33 percent of Mozambique you can see it drifts off just about five percent lower and two percent in Ghana so haplogroup L2A observe West Africa in the the Malinke in the Wolof or Wolf in the Moor the, the Moore Moore the Amorite or Moor the Hasu or the Fubal in Central Africa and the Baki in South Africa and the Koshin family in the Kui and the Bantu I don't even know how the fuck that is pronounced if it is Kui I have no idea how that just even came out of my mouth the Kikyu and the in, in the Kenya all clads present in Ethiopia are mainly derived from L2A, L2B and L21 26 out of 33 Amer uh, African Amer however, whereas the majority of 26 out of 33 African Americans shell haplogroup L2A, complete sequences could be partitioned into four subclass by sub <laughs> situations at N NPS L2A 1E 3495. 
Okay, none of those sequences are observed in Ethiopian. Okay, so the Ethiopian was not in Babylon, if, if this is correct. But the African Americans, 26 out of every 33 African American was shares this woman's blood, L2. In the 30%, real Africans share this blood, this woman's blood. L2A, North, uh, uh, Bantu, uh, North African, Tunisia, Sephardic, Ashkenazi, Hebrews, and Yemens. Okay, so L2A, C, uh, 1C1. In North Africa, Hebrews and Yemenis. Okay, Yemen. See, I told you the Hebrews and Yemens are related. Yemen, it is Hemen in in Genesis. Hemen is the Yemens. All right. I've I've, I've like uh, even type. Listen, if, even if I go over here and say, what's the haplogroup of Hebrews? They're not going to tell me. They're not going to tell me the truth. Hapro group G, right? Now, remember, we went to G and it's white people, right? I was, I'll was i remember that because I was thinking Freemason. Is is what? The old world Europe populations. Old world. Oh, shit. Old world Europe populations. So not the, the new Europe populations, right? The Middle East, North Africa, Central South, East Asia, and it's a genetic marker for the Ashkenazi. Now you already know the Ashkenazi. I don't give a fuck how many people say it's the Ashkenazi aren't the Ashkenazi. The Ashkenazi, the Ashkenazi are the Ashkenazi. They're from fucking Gomer. They're fr they're from Japheth. That's what this Bible says. If this DNA says they're they're part African. That don't mean they're whole African. That means that their parents slept with Africans. Oh shit! Where were we? Right. So L L two one L two A one K is Czechs and Slavics, right? L two A one A twelve A. Wait, that's AI2A, Ashkenazi specific haplogroup, seen amongst Ashkenazi Jews with their ancestry in Central and Eastern Europe. Also been detected in small numbers. Austrian, Austrian, of whatever, in Jewish Polish population, where it's presumed to have come from at Ashkenazi mixture. However, the haplogroup is only a very small portion of Ashkenazi mitochondrial lineages. Various studies include barley, uh, in, in between 1.4 and 1.6. So you can scroll down and just see how many people share L. You know, somehow this woman group was went through by everybody. All of us come from her, and it's in modern. It's not like it's Eve, it's in modern time. So, when we look at the Hebrews, again, they ain't gonna give us no DNA for that. We can play with that all day. So we type in African Americans, and it says blacks, and when we scroll down, the term we wanted, we, we were looking for DNA. Now, most black Americans are of West and Central African descent, and their descendants are of enslaved peoples within the boundaries of the present United States. Now, that's not true because you are just, you're related to the pre-Hispanic black people in Mexico. And they're fucking lying to you. Just because they speak a different language is because they're in a different territory. United States on African, on, on average African American are 73% West African. 24% European and 8% Native American. They already told you that 24% European is a myth. They already told you that Europeans share the same African blood. So you're no percentage European. Your R1B blood factor has nothing to do with Europe. It has to do with Chad Africa. So they're writing this biasly as if they're your parent. 
And that's what they've done to make you think that they should rule over you. You see what's going on over here in these paleo shits? It's saying the indigenous people show uh, 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 lots of genetic uh, 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 the genetic pattern indicates Amer Indians experienced two very distinctive genetic episodes. The first with the people, with the initial peopling of the Americas, the second with European colonization of America. And you know that's not true. The indigenous people of America are, are, are not the people that they show us as Indians. That's why they showed you when they did DNA, where is it at? The Yuchi. Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. See, that's why I, I need to not come backwards in these. Ah! Damn it, it's that one that showed uh, that, that your uh, old, old DNA and new DNA. Yeah, it's up front. It's 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 further up here somewhere. It's in this one. See, this is Smithsonian two thousand four article, and they messed up when they did this. Because this gives it all away. Right here, modern um, uh, Native Americans. Okay, <laughs> modern and native are are they're, that word. That's an oxymoron type shit. They're opposites. You can't have modern natives. Natives would have been natives the whole fucking time. If you say modern natives, you're telling me you changed the natives. I'm not stupid. Modern natives resemble Chinese people of China, Korea, and Japan. Right? Look. Small number of early American specimens discovered so far have smaller and shorter faces and longer and narrow skull skulls than later Native Americans. Modern Native Americans are the later Native Americans that resemble China, Koreans, and fucking Japanese people. You done gave it all a fucking way. The DNA evidence matched with anthropology fucking tells the story. Reading the rest of these things, it becomes stupid. Once we get to L, something happened that everybody shared the same type of woman. It doesn't mean everybody shared the same woman. It means everybody shared one blood group. You were a slave. They claim your DNA is African even if it isn't. They say we found your dead bodies in Africa even though the Bible says you were born there, even though your bloodline's not not Africa. They say we're gonna do everything DNA wise for the most part from the woman MT DNA because it's easier. That's what they say, right? We read that earlier. I. Haplogroup I. I am 170 is predominantly a European haplogroup and is considered to be as the only native European haplogroup. Europeans are not native to Europe. USA Today, DNA rewrites history for African Americans. But does it? But DNA she recently, tests she recently took showed strong similarities between the genetic code and the Mende and the Temne people of Sierra Leone, Africa. Now I have a place where I can go back 
and say, this is who I am, this is my home. And when you do that, the Europeans who formed your fucking opinion will say, he's no longer on the land. We don't have to worry about getting him out. So you type in Y-DNA haplogroups in North American populations. Europeans come up. Mm. Here, let me click on that one again. You see it goes to indigenous people again. Apple groups by populations is a different one. In North Africa, in South Asia, in Central and North Asia. Now where is the one for North America? Distribution of Y chromosomes among native North what? North Americans. So this is forbidden. So chromosome haplogroups by populations and we want the Americas indigenous people of Americas is the only one that they give us for that right look by ethnic group population in Near East North Africa sub-Saharan Africa the Caucasus South populations of uh, East to Asia in South Asia North Asia they break Asia into a bunch of different shits but they won't tell you nigga DNA nigga why won't they tell you your DNA you don't get it, do you? You're marginalized. They do not want to tell you who you are. Now let's click this one by ethnic group. Here's distribution of Y chromosome among native North Americans, a study. Athopaxian population history. So this is just to one population group. So I'm not even going to go further into that one. So each time by ethnic group, right? Now, Asbanians, Asbanians. So here's the big secret to this. Look, it says Caucasians there. Albanians don't tell you what they are there. Altic Turks. Turks. Here, here. Amara. Amhara, Amhara says they're Afro-Asianic, they are Semitic. Now, you can move the bar out and see what they're made up of. 33, 48 people did a survey to 45% right here. E1B1A, E1B1B and E1, sorry, and J, excuse me, 35% J. 33% J, I'm retarded. 33% J, 45% E1B1A. 2% something else. Alright? So these is how these charts work. So, go over here. Dravidic, right? Whatever. Go here. Afro. Afro. Arabs. Wait. You have Arabs that are Afro? Yes, you do. Now, those Afro Arabs, how much of E1B1 do they have? There's I. They don't have any I. E1, B1, Afro, Arab. It says 50. That is not the number of people that they took. It says 50, as in 50%. 50% of Afro Arabs have E1, B1. And what is this? J? There's J again. They're Afro Semitic. J. E1, B1, B, and J. Scroll back down. E1, B1, B, and 35% J. Is there anything else in them? No. Yes. Right here, right up front. R1, B. See how that works? Now, 50 plus 35 is 85, plus what? 15 is left over. Then there are 2%, there's 13. 13 minus 15 is 2. They're 2% something. And they don't have that tag. Now that's a... F right here in this line, they show a full 98% of what the Afro-Asianic Arab Algerians are. Now when you add these things up and they don't come near 100, then, you know, what they mingled with isn't there. You have the Egyptians here, Afro-Asianic. So they have 4% this, 2% that, 0.7% this, 
36 percent this two percent what are the what is this e1b1b E1B? yeah e1b1b E1B for the egyptian 36 percent of that they are 32 percent j right that's j or you yeah, j 32 percent j oh i don't got my highlighted portion off screen and then eight percent t see how that goes so these are your people groups it doesn't mean you're from this bloodline but these are your people groups arabs afro arabs in algeria right afro arabs in bedouin afro asianic egyptians afro arabs in Israel. Now these are these are not other Arabs that are non Afro. Now if there's Arabs in Israel that are non Afro, this is not their blood being tested. Afro Arabs in Morocco. Afro Afro Af see this? All these places they did Afro Asianic people. Afro means they have to have an Afro. If you see a name here without Afro uh, 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 that you don't think is Afro for the most part, they have people there that look like you. They were taken there in slaves, as slaves. All right, Armenians is not Afro. The Arabs uh, in Libya, Afro-Asianic. See, they did it in small numbers, 63. There's not a bunch of people over there, but they're still there. So you just scroll down. Here's the Ashkenazi Jews, Afro-Asianic. Now you have to ask yourself, what the fuck could they be talking about? These Ashkenazi Jews that they show pictures of are not Afro-Asianic. Why are they thrown in there? Because these people want to take your place. Now, why would somebody that controls Wikipedia write them in there? Because wherever Wikipedia took this information from, it's written in that the Ashkenazi Caucasians wrote themselves in as Asianic fucking people with afros from the bloodline of Shem. Just that simple. They look just like fucking Germans. And they have written themselves in the book as afro peoples. How much afro blood do they have? They say they have 22%, right? 22% in one area. They won't even tell you how many people were fucking tested. That's how you know it's a fucking lie. Then out of nowhere, oh, 422 people were tested. And then out of nowhere, 79 people were tested. And they test what? E1, B1, right? E1, B1, B. They come back. Where's my highlight? As, as, as 22%, right? J, they come back as 43%. So I'm going to tell you something. If they're going to sit there and say that E1B1 and they're J, then there's something important in J. Because you already know they don't have fucking Afro. They're not Asianic. They're Gomer. And they're not Shemitic. They're Japhetic. All I did was use the rules of the Bible against the rules of their DNA. They want to be you, you so fucking bad. That's what they'll do to be you. They'll botch the numbers. Scroll down. Nobody else is pretending to be fucking Afro-Asian. Here. Afro-Asian. Kushik. Kushitic. Beja. Berber's Afro-Asian. Berber, Afro-Asian. Berber, 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 Afro-Asian. Niger Congo. Now you know those as niggas. Or you know those as a type of niggas. But they're not written in as Afro. Because they don't, they don't grow Afros. Now the Baja people. The Beja people. Right? The, the, the Kush people. Kushik. You see that guy? You don't look like that guy. See how red that guy is? See how his hair grows straight? You're not like that guy. He's not Afro. Banjo language. They just show you the language, right? So you think about that. They got the Baja people there. That was the motherfucking Afro people, right? Afro, Asiatic, Kushik, Kushitic. And you just look at them. 
That's what they look like. Indians. A different type of Indian. Right? And you know those as Africans. So you know Africans produce Indians as well. Now, again, not all these things. When you look at the Berbers, you can see white people. They listen to these people as Afro-Asiatic. I'm not going to read all this shit. I don't care what this shit say. See? Ancient Libyan. Nigga with an afro. Right? Now. Hercules wrestling with a Libyan giant. Now the pictures is white. Right? Alright. So you see they're still your identity no matter what part in history it is. Here's them stealing your fucking identity as well. Right? Ooh, shit, wait. What are the Gonchi Kings? What is that? Berber Aboriginal habitant inhabitants from the Canary Islands is believed that they migrated to the islands around 1000 BC or perhaps earlier. While it is generally considered that the Guanches no longer exist as a dis 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 distinct ethnicity, the traces of their culture can be found intermixed throughout the Canary customs and traditions. Okay, so there's another people the group has been rooted out by these goddamn people. So, again, you can check this out if you want. Scroll down. Some of these people are related to you. Some of them not. Some people, the Druze, they're Arabs. Some some carry the Afro-Asianic title and, and there's no Afro on them. Some carry the Afro-Asianic title and there is an Afro on them and you never knew they existed. Yeah, when I scroll this, uh, I'm not seeing any kind of images that's going to show me anything uh, Afro. So again, you know, it leads me not to believe that they're an Afro peoples. All right. Um, Apple group. This is is this where we get the fucking image from? Yeah, this is where we get the image from. This damn evil image. All right, so we read a lot about a lot of these. All right, you see C right here, you see C right here. You know, these people were sent there, and you know, these people were sent here. All right, and you see C up here above Mesopotamia and all throughout, you know, Russia and shit like that. I don't know why C just stood out to me right there, but whatever. You know, we went over a lot of this stuff today. I'm, 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 I'm done. You can see, look. This is family circus. Let me go up here. This is, I don't know, people were insulted by this. Family circus. Okay, family circus is a cartoon that comes in the Sunday paper. I'm 40 years old. Ever since I started looking at the comics in, in the Sunday paper, it's always been there, you know. Um, basically, these... Uh, people have five kids uh, I'm, f I'm sorry four kids and these kids are a handful and you know they always do uh, the Sunday comments about how do you keep your fucking sense when you got four kids running around and where all do they go so basically there's a start over here and there's an end over here and basically every every Sunday basically you know this is a little kid done been in fucking everything and they do this trail about to how the kid done gone all over the fucking house and just fucked up shit and did this or tore up that and you know and if you click on any of these it's pretty much the same thing you know oh that's the same one uh here you go map of op open country open country right so it's basically his backyard and shit and you run around you know Look, Tiger Woods, Beyonce Knowles, Elijah Woods, you know, he makes forests, Orson, Orson Welles, you know. And so, uh, when you see 
family circus. Look, they got a little fucking teepee in there. They, they knew I was coming. When you see family circus and you see how they track these kids all around and chase them all around the house and shit like that. And then you go to this world map, world map of why DNA Apple groups and, and, and you play this game by these standards as well. This is what it makes me think of all the time, you know, it, it, it just makes me think of, it's, it's a mockery. Now, I can't help that's the way my mind perceives it. Now, I've been on the fence years about doing DNA tests. There ain't many people that don't want to know who they're related to. The problem is, is something in people sits there and says, don't deal with these companies. I can't help that. There's plenty of people that have not met me have not heard my voice that that already inherently have written in them don't fucking deal with this now if you feel it you've got some leg up you feel that all these different fucking confusing definitions when you go for 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 male they give you female when when you go for mitochondrial eve you know they tell you well it's not a it's not at the beginning it's not what you would think uh, it's actually in the middle. It's L. You know, when you start going into different people's DNA and finding that that these people have the same last names, the same DNA. They all came out of Africa. They're all white now. You can see. Some of it matches the Bible, and you can see some of it is just very confusing. I can't sit there and say I agree with it as a science, because when I look at DNA, all I can tell is what makes up a person, and then half the time, they don't even want to use the correct terminology or the truth about the groups being examined. Now, I'm sorry. I am just some guy from the streets that's relatively poor, that has dark skin and an afro in a white supremacist system. This shit doesn't make sense. Unless I'm trying... To confuse somebody. That's the only way it makes sense. Is if I don't... Everybody on the earth can figure out their fucking origin of their DNA. Except for the Negro. You've got to understand... There is a scheme. Ashkenazi Jews from the bloodline of Japhet... Write themselves in as Afro-Asianic, Shemitic people. They control the DNA. They don't know who, who, who Genghis Khan's fucking body is to research DNA, but he done fucked everybody, so everybody's DNA is in him. His DNA is in everybody. So the Ashkenazi Jews write themselves in as Shemitic people with Afros, even though they're not Shemitic, and they don't have Afros. And the only thing that we know about DNA is we know who the Koshin DNA is, because that's the tribe of Aaron. Biblically, the importance of the tribe of Aaron is huge. Worldly, the importance of the tribe of Aaron is small. All these other things that are big, George Washington, fucking Jefferson, the descendants of Ulysses uh, S. Grant, fucking the descendants of Ptolemy. Come on, put fucking Ptolemy and Cleopatra. The DNA of Caesar, DNA of Alexander the Great. DNA of Sargon. DNA of Tickler Pilsleth the third. Whether that's Genghis Khan or not. DNA of Adam? Nothing like that at all. We know the Koshin DNA. It's us. We have straight hair, but we're classifying ourselves as Afro 
Asian. We are Shemitic. We are the Ashkenazi. Bible says Ashkenazi Shafet, but we are Ashkenazi Jews. Yes. There's something wrong with that. The problem is the whole world accepted that. Nobody questioned anything that has to do with them. Somebody littered. I can feel it. Somebody littered near me. <laughs>